Today is Monday, Parashat Korach. Korach puts together a mutiny, a rebellion against Moshe Rabbeinu. He brings with him Datan, Aviram, On Ben Pelet, and also he brings with him 250 Rashi Sanhedrin. And he rebels against Moshe. What's his claim? Well, Kehat, who was the son of Levi, had four boys, Amram, Itzhar, Hebron, and Oziel. The oldest son, Amram, of Kehat, had two boys, Moshe and Aaron. Moshe was given the title of, he was the sort of the king for Am Yisrael. And Aaron was given the function of Kohen Gadol, the high priest. And the next boy after Amram is Yitzhar. Then comes Hebron. And the youngest is Uziel. When Moshe assigns the title of the person who's, who's the leader of the descendants of Kehat, he gives it to Elitzafan ben Uziel, who was the son of the youngest of the brothers. Korah says, wait a minute, if Amram is, is the oldest, and, my, and his father Yitzhar was the next in terms of age, he should be one deserving to be the leader of the descendants of Kehat. And therefore, he feels that he's slighted. Now, we should always remember that Korach was a very, very wealthy person. Actually, we have even an expression, Mamon Korach, when somebody is very rich, we say that he has as much money as Korach. He was also one of the people in charge of carrying the Aron Kodesh, the Aron where the tablets of the Torah were kept. He was one of the people carrying it, so he had an important function in that respect, the most important one. And being so wealthy, he didn't need any more title, titles, but the jealousy, when jealousy comes in, that there is discord and there is conflict, and he met a very unfortunate end when the earth opened up and swallowed him. On Ben Penet, who appears in the beginning of the parasha as part of the mutiny, is not mentioned afterwards. And according to the Midrash, his wife saved him. She told him, no matter who is, whether it's Korach or Moshe, you have no, no part, nothing, no benefit from this whole argument there. And therefore, she gave him some wine, put him to sleep, and she was at the opening of her tent, combing her hair, when the partners in, in that mutiny came to look for him, they said, well, she was at the opening of the tent, they did, out of modesty, they just left him there, and he was saved. And Hakamim used a pasuk, Hachmot Nashim Banta Beta, the wisdom of the of the Nashim, of the women, Banta Beta, built her home. In other words, she was really credited for saving her husband. Now, you'd think that uh, it doesn't take much wisdom or understanding to see that uh, On Ben Pellet would have no benefit whether Moshe Rabbeinu wins in that argument or Korach, he's just going to be still left with the same level of importance. But when there is discord, when there is machloket, when there is conflict and people argue, there's no more wisdom. Even things that would seem to be so easy to understand are not uh, seen, are not, are not perceived. And therefore, a person should be very careful not to get into machloket, into arguments, because when it's machloket, there's only bad things that can happen. And the more we have unity amongst us, the more we sort of understand, like in the case of Korach, we should have understood that Moshe Rabbeinu appointed Elitzafan, the son of Uziel, al pia dibur, because Hashem meant it to be that way. Not because he decided that uh, ad hoc that's what should be. It was a directive from Hashem. And Korach should have accepted it. Not find that as a reason to rebel against Moshe. So we, we all has, have peace amongst us and peace in the world. Because when there is peace, there is always also many blessings. Baruch Adonai le'olam. Amen ve'amen.